This is going to rival the Great Depression of 1929. We just got new economic data that shows the economic downturn is accelerating and accelerating quick. But we are also facing a perfect storm because right as the economy is taking a huge turn, layoffs are being announced right, left, front and center, and also consumer debt is skyrocketing to levels we have never seen. So this is not a drill, ladies and gentlemen. You need to prepare right now for the greatest financial crisis of our lifetime. So what is this new economic data? What's really happening in the economy? And what does this also mean for the stock market that's still severely overvalued? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna go over in today's video. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Look at this, everyone, this is it. US consumer sentiment drops to six month low in May. Now, this is quite funny because what has all the news anchors and all the market analysts been saying? They've been saying the consumer's strong. They have a strong balance sheet. And I've been thinking, I know a lot of you've been thinking because you've been commenting in the videos below, that's not true at all. People are struggling more than ever with record inflation. People only have money to spend on the essentials and sometimes that's not even enough. Yes, maybe the 1% or super rich were spending like crazy, but now that the markets haven't been performing well, even they aren't spending anymore. So like I said, it's dropped to a six month low as a standoff to raise the federal government's borrowing cap Fan worries about the economy's outlook, a survey showed on Friday. So what is that survey? Well, the University of Michigan's primarily reading on the overall index of consumer sentiment, and this is a big miss, everyone. Listen to this. Came in at 57.7 this month, the lowest reading since last November, and this is down from 63.5 in April. An economist pulled by Reuters had forecast a primarily reading of 63. So this is an absolutely huge miss, everyone off the mark by nearly 10%. And this is also a drop of almost 10%. It was 63.5 last month, now it's 57.7. So this is showing the consumer is rapidly losing faith in the economy. They don't feel confident at all. They're going to stop spending. And also with the credit crunches going on, they're not gonna be able to spend. And this goes to show as well that you can't just believe all the economists, all the analysts out there, because they get it wrong all the time even nearly as bad as YouTubers. While current incoming macroeconomic data show no sign of recession, well, I'd completely disagree. We're already in a recession right now, but then maybe they're trying to say there won't be a depression. Consumers' worries about the economy escalated in May alongside the proliferation of negative news about the economy, including the debt crisis. So this is another thing worrying consumers, worrying the markets right now. Jamie Dimon at JP Morgan said this is gonna cause panic and chaos because they all want that more debt, baby, because the US uh, monetary system relies on more and more debt. And as soon as debt starts to fall, the money supply starts to fall, which is happening now, the whole system comes crumbling down. If policymakers fail to resolve the debt ceiling crisis, these dismal views over the economy will exacerbate the dire economic consequences of default. Well, everyone, if you do the math, the US government is bankrupt. There's absolutely no way they can repay the debt. And you're starting to notice now these uh, debt ceiling talks are becoming closer and closer. At this rate, maybe every month they'll start to hit the debt ceiling and they'll need to have these emergency meetings because the US government is running out of money and also interest rates are rising and it's making it more and more expensive to service this debt. But this is just one piece to a very complicated puzzle of the macroeconomic picture. But I'm going to really break it down and simplify it for you, everyone. This is going to be a good one. I've got lots of data to go through. The consumer sentiment is weakening and they're trying to tell us that the unemployment rate is at 3.4% a 50 year low while the other data doesn't match up and the facts don't match up to that at all u.s layoffs are happening and they're happening quick so like i reported early in the week u.s jobless claims rise to the highest level since october 2021 inside of labor market cooling so initial unemployment claims increased by 22,000 to 264,000 in the week ended may 6 and the reading was higher than all estimates in bloomberg survey of economists again all these economists experts got it wrong about consumer sentiment and they're also getting it wrong about about layoffs. But I've got even more data and proof to back it up that there are big layoffs happening. Look at the amount of layoffs that were just announced in April. Okay, so first up, meat giant Tyson Foods is laying off about 15% of senior leadership roles and 10% of corporate roles. The cuts come after Tyson announced layoffs of nearly 1,700 workers in March after closing two poultry plants in an effort to boost profit. But the list goes on. So 3M is announcing layoffs as well. The brand behind the post-it notes and scotch tape 
said in a statement it would lay off about 6,000 staff around the world. Lyft as well. The announcement follows Lyft's move in November to cut 13% of its workforce, citing fears of a looming recession. So on one hand, these companies are telling everything's fine, but on the other hand, they're announcing mass layoffs to prepare for the economic pain that is coming. Whole Foods is laying off an unspecified number of employees. The company confirmed to CNN, headcount will be reduced by less than half of 1% of total employees focused exclusively on corporate roles. Consulting giant Delotti will lay off 1,200 employees. BuzzFeed, they're going bankrupt. The digital media company announced 15% reduction in its workforce, or about 180 employees. David's Bridal, the notice said the retailers are eliminating 9,263 positions across the United States, but did not specify how many stores will be affected. The layoffs came as the company filed for bankruptcy for the second time in five years. This was another story that I covered recently that repeat bankruptcies have hit their highest level since 2009. This is a very, very worrying economic sign, everyone. Big Bad Walmart is laying off more than 2,000 workers across five U.S. warehouses to fulfill website orders in a move that came weeks after America's largest private employer warned it's in for a rough year ahead. So we really want to get a picture of how the economy is doing if Walmart's struggling right when that has a lot of consumer staples with things that people need. You know, times are getting really tough. McDonald's and Bed Bath Beyond are announcing layoffs as well. So if people aren't spending and people lose their jobs, what do you think is going to happen, everyone? Well, they're not going to have any money. They're not going to be able to spend and companies' earnings are going to fall off a cliff. Now, maybe if the market wasn't so severely overvalued, this would be fine. But the stock market is still, even after the correction is had, severely overvalued. And let me prove it to you. So the famous Warren Buffett indicator the aggregate US market cap of 43 trillion and the annualized GDP of 26.5 trillion, the Warren Buffett indicator says the stock market is overvalued with it being 165% of GDP. Not only that, but the S&P 500 PE ratio, that's a price to earnings ratio uh, of the stock market, is right now at 23.8. Now the mean is 16 and the medium is 14.9. So this is another indicator to say that the stock market is still severely overvalued. Now, the stock market has been stagnant and has been falling for the past two weeks. There's a lot of hesitancy in the stock market. A lot of the bulls think that companies' earnings are going to keep on going up. They think that the US is going to avoid recession. And they also think that inflation is going to come down and the Federal Reserve is going to start cutting interest rates. But what they don't realize is the only reason the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates is if we face a severe recession or even a depression. So why inflation has been the big fear in the markets right now even if inflation does get solved, the only thing that's going to solve it is a deep recession or depression like I've been warning about. We're not going to get inflation down without a severe economic contraction. Because look at this last very important indicator. Look at this shadow run. This is absolutely frightening. This is total consumer credit owned and securitized. We can see here it has done nothing but absolutely skyrocket since the 1990s. And it has gone to unbelievable levels. We now have debt of $4.85 So again, Again, this is creating a perfect storm of where consumer debt is at all-time highs, mass layoffs are about to happen, and consumer sentiment is absolutely falling. And unfortunately, people, it's not going to end well. First, it's going to be people not spend. Then that means companies are going to have to lay off people. Then that means those other companies that people are still employed at are going to lose revenue, and that's going to cause a domino effect. Then they're going to announce layoffs. People aren't going to have money to repay these loans, and they're going to default. And then that's going to be big issues for the banks right now that are already in big, big trouble. And we will have another financial crisis. It's just simply unavoidable. These things happen in cycles. The cycles always happen. But if government and the Federal Reserve has tried to intervene in the natural cycle, we normally have a recession or a deep economic contraction every seven to 10 years. But they thought that they could just keep the boom going forever. Unfortunately, people, it can't go on. We need a correction to happen. So everyone, I know we're thinking, well, okay, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, it's very, very simple. If you still have a job, do everything you can to keep that job. If you can, start a side hustle because you need to increase your income. You're never going to get ahead relying on the government. If you don't know a side hustle, get another part-time job. I know it's tough, but during tough times, the tough get going. Pay off debt while you still can, while interest rates are still high. Don't even think about investing in the markets if you have debt with a 7% interest rate plus. And then if you've done all those three things and you still have a lot of money, a lot of wealth you wanted to protect, you want to diversify a real hard asset that a hedge against an economic collapse, 
like gold, silver, and also if you want to diversify out of the financial system, if you're worried about the banks going under, you want to hold real gold because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Same with Bitcoin. If you not you don't have your keys, it's not your crypto. That's the saying uh, with Bitcoin as well. And I think gold, silver, and Bitcoin can actually work together instead of the gold and Bitcoin community fighting against each other. But everyone, what do you think will happen? Let me know down below. Now, for my loyal viewers and subscribers to watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.